I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. A blessed, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. God has indeed been good to us. And as such, we have come into his house to glorify his name and to worship him. Before we begin our worship, let us kneel for prayer as we invite the presence of the Lord to be with us. Our great, loving, eternal Father, we thank you for the Holy Sabbath day. We thank you that you have spared our lives to see this day. We pray even now that you will tune our hearts and our minds, lift it heavenward so that we will think on you, reflect on you. May our actions, our words, and our thoughts be holy, even as you are holy. Bless us this day, we pray. Be with those who are on their way. In Jesus' name, amen. For surely I come quickly. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 2, page 190, paragraph 1, reminds us that Jesus left us these words of admonition. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. What I say, I say unto all, watch. As we watch, even unto the approaching day of the Lord, may we lay aside all our cares and turn our hymns to hymn number 394. Far from all cares, we hail the Sabbath morning. Hymn 394. Far from all care, we hail the Sabbath morning, o'er waving fields and from the distant sea. Swell goes the praise in harmony resounding as all creation turns her heart to thee. No. to him 604 we know not the hour of our master's appearing 604 we know not the hour of the master 
sisters of Perry. Yet signs are foretell that the moment is nearing when he shall return. Tis a promise most cheering, but we know not the art. He will come. He will come. Let us watch and be. Keep marching until we reach Zion. Him 422, marching to Zion.
marching to Zion, and we all want together with Jesus and the saints. We'll turn to him, 432. Shall we gather at the river? 432. Shall we gather at the river where bright angels feet have trod with its crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God? Yes, we will gather at the river, the beautiful. Beautiful river, gather with the saints at the river that flows from the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray, we will walk and worship and strive to meet by that river. May we watch and be steadfast. Have a blessed Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, saints of God. Sabbath. Yes, we're here. Another Sabbath. And I don't know for you, but this week went by so quickly. You know, I was there and I remember Sunday. And then the next thing I was asking my husband, today is Thursday? Yes, it was Thursday already. So this week went by really quickly. But one more time, we're in the house of the Lord and we have every reason to give him thanks, don't it? Yes, yes. Yes. Ah. Uh, how are we this week? I hear rest and I hear blessed. And, and what else? Highly favored or flavored? Favorite. I'm both. I'm flavored and favored. <laughs> Say that we are the salt of the earth. And you know that one of the main ingredients that we must use is salt if we need to enhance the taste. Lord tells us that we must taste and see that he is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. We're here for another study. 
test of character, the patience of the saints. And before we move into the study, we'll have a word of prayer. All right, let us pray. Dear kind and heavenly Father, we come to you this Sabbath morning once more. We are grateful for the lovely hymns that we sang that lifted our hearts up to heaven. As we seek to go through this study now, we ask for your Holy Spirit once more to touch us, keep our minds fixed on you, and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that we can truly grasp your words and to apply them to our lives. I ask you now to wash away the sins from, from us. Please hide myself and my wife behind your cross, behind Jesus' cross, that we will not be seen, but Jesus will be lifted high in this place and your message, your gospel, your truth. Thank you now for hearing and answering our prayers and for keeping us through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we want to welcome each and everyone here today with our study. I hope, well, I believe we're a little short on the handouts. Uh, hopefully each person, if you don't have one, at least someone next to you, you can share. Also, you can go online and you can find that same Hand out, print it off, and fill it in for further study. So welcome each and everyone here. Welcome those online locally, and welcome those online internationally. Let me see your Bibles. All right. Lovely. So you have your Bibles, you have your pen, and I, on the, oh, you have your paper, an extra paper if you needs be, and your thinking cap. Because we are here to study, interact, and to learn. So not because we are presenting. We are here to what? Yes, man. So I'm welcoming your points. All right. Of course, our scripture, as Mayok always puts it, Isaiah 1 verse 8. So by the time we are finished with this study, all of us should know this one. Isaiah 1 verse 18, it says, Come now and let us reason together, said the Lord. Though, Though your sins be as scarlet, they, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. All right. So let's recap. Let's go back. Do you guys, you guys that were here, you followed with the study? How was it? No? All right. Let me ask again. Those who are here, did you follow with the study last week? Because we weren't here last week. We were in Montego Bay, right? So those who are here, did you follow with the study? Okay, so I hear a no. All right, so let's recap. Hopefully from our recap, you can catch up. And guess what? You can watch it. It's on the internet. All right, here we go. So two important things are examined in the judgment, right? One, the law of God, which is the standard or rule. So example, weak or strong or good or bad, right? And then the law of God is fixed because it is perfect and what? Complete, all right? And two, the character or actions of men. They are measured by the law of God. They are movable because we have fallen and come short of God's glory. We are now working to go back to perfection. We are working to do what? Go back to perfection. All right. So God's law is the standard and it is where? It is high. It is at the top. And we are somewhere, I notice I said we, somewhere, probably even below this mark. But each of us are at different stages. So, 
or pardon me, Sister Karen, for picking on you. Maybe she's at 165 and I'm at 155 and Mayoka is at 10 or something. You get what I'm saying? We're at different stages. But where are we working to go? Perfection. Perfection. And we should stop at nothing to achieve what? Right. Don't make excuses for not going there. Don't say, yeah, don't make excuses. That's enough. All right, important facts. The law of God remains at the highest place of perfection on the level. Our position changes based on the character level we are at between filthiness and... But God says we are to do what? Be holy as... That means when we reach holiness, we reach where? Perfection. And we can... Through, all right. Now, through the influence of the Holy Spirit of God, we may be transformed in mind and heart. All right. So, what is character? Mental ability, genius, and reputation are not character. All right. True character is a quality of the soul revealing itself in the Conduct, revealing itself. So, as one person said, you know, go, what did he say? Squeeze. Um, when I remember it, I tell you. You know, take time, squeeze, and say, you see, then go. I say, go. When I remember that one there, take time, mash, and say, you see, go. All right. So, when you're in the situation, is when your true character will be revealed. All right. So, in Luke. In Luke 6.45, Matthew 12.33, Proverbs 20.11. So Luke 6.45 talks about the heart will be revealed in speech. So out of the abundance of the heart, they? All right. Matthew 12.33 tells us that the tree is known by its? All right. So by the fruits you shall? All right. And Proverbs 20.11, children have the same standard of judgment. So don't think children is judged different from adults. And that is why, as you see this little book, Child Guidance, that is why it teaches that adults should teach, you should train the children in a particular manner. That is how they reflect what you are teaching. All right. So in Child Guidance, a good character is a, is a capital of more value than gold or silver. It is unaffected by panics or failures. And in that day when earthly possessions shall be swept away, it will bring rich returns, integrity, firmness, and perseverance are qualities that all should seek to earnestly, all should seek earnestly to cultivate. For they clothe the possessor with a power which is irresistible. A power which makes him strong, which is from integrity. Strong to do good, from integrity. Strong to resist evil, from firmness. Strong to bear adversity, from what? Perseverance. All right? Jeremiah 1778, still recapping. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see, <coughs> sorry, when heat cometh, when trouble cometh, when persecution cometh, he shall not see what? Heat. But her leaf shall be what? Green. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So nothing affects one who trusted in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. All right? Now, right, so th that's where we stopped last week. And so 
Persons who had the handouts from last week, take them out. We were not finished with that one. We will be continuing with the one that we were looking at last week. And we are going to continue looking now at how do we develop a good character? How do we develop a good character? And for that, we will continue with question seven. So those who had the handout last week, question seven, how do we develop a good character? And for that, we are going to read Review and Herald, August 15, 1893. What does it say? The soul does not become more and more like Christ by beholding evil, but like the evil which it beholds. And uh, you, sorry. And you know, just take maybe a second more to just contemplate on that concept because this is a principle. It says that the soul does not become more and more like Christ by beholding evil, but like the evil which it beholds. You know, there's a saying, by beholding we become what? Changed. Changed. And if we have before our eyes evil, what is the short result? We will become what? Evil. Evil. And if it is that we put before our eyes good, what is the short result? Good. So somewhere along the line, even with children, and for me especially, I have to now be unlearning some of what I would have learned because you expect that, all right, the child, you must use the rod, the rod of correction. You must... Continuously, just if the child is, has done something wrong, then what you do, you scold that child. But having now going through the principles of child guidance and looking through the Bible principles, what we realize is that if we put before the children evil, what is the sure result? Evil. Evil. And so we know even in molding and teaching the children, we have to set the standard. We have to know replace that which we thought was right to know reform and to do what God expects us to do in disciplining. Even in disciplining those children, we have to make sure that we put what? A right character before them. We have to be in perfect control. We have to be reflecting Jesus because if we do any less than that and we lose our temper, that same mold that we're setting before them, that is the sure result. Oh, yes. And even us in the world, when we go out, you know, there is a saying, some persons, we will be the only Jesus that some persons will ever see. And so by the, them beholding us, our persons in our homes, our, in our communities beholding us, what are they seeing? Hmm. Are they seeing the good or are they seeing the evil? Hmm. It's a question that we need to think about. And, you know, it, this one goes, it hits directly at the, it's in the book, Great Controversy. It's in the book, Great Controversy, where the Catholics, that is one of the doctrine of the Catholics, that if it is that you continually put before the person's torment and what hell is going to be, then that is the way to keep them in line and keep them godly. And here, this, this, this saying, it goes directly against that principle because it's saying that you cannot keep before the person's torment. You cannot keep before them hell and a, a terrible God and expect them to be good. They will not be good. If we lift up the banner of Christ, if we show them the character of Christ and the faith of Jesus, that is what we need to be doing. We understand this principle? Right. So by beholding good, we become good. By beholding evil, we will become evil. What does 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 say? But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And what are we supposed to be beholding? Based on 
2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. What are we supposed to be holding? The Beholding glory. as in a glass. The what? The glory the of the glory Lord. The glory of the Lord. Indeed. The glory of the Lord. And be, by beholding the glory of the Lord, we will what? Be changed into that same image. And the work is carried out by who? By the Spirit of the Lord. But someone might have the question, okay, I'm supposed to be beholding the glory of the Lord. What is the glory of the Lord? Do we know what the glory of the Lord is? Many persons think about the outward. It's the, it's the brightness. It's the shining light. But is that the glory of God? What is the glory of God? Ooh. With that said, we will look at Exodus 33, verses 18 and 19. And this is now recalling the story of Moses. You remember when Moses was talking to the Lord and he asked for him to show him his glory? We are going to find out what the glory of the Lord is or what God expects us to be looking into. All right. So, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. So this is who talking? Moses. And he said, I will make my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the what? The name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And it continues. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Did it say proclaim his brightness? Proclaim his name. And the Lord passed by him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children uh, unto the third and to the fourth generation so i hope by reading this we understand what god expects us to be looking into we are looking into that glass the glory of on the glory of god but what is the glory of god so when we started out here go back here moses here moses was talking and he said to the lord show me your glory and the lord didn't say okay i'll show you my glory but the lord said what did he say he said that he said he will proclaim the name of the Lord. What did he say he was going to do? Proclaim. proclaim the name of the Lord. And so what God is concerned is, is that his name is supposed to be proclaimed. His glory is a reflection of his name. And he went on now to say, the Lord, the Lord God, he is what? Merciful, merciful, he is gracious, gracious. he is long-suffering, long he is abundant in goodness and truth. So I want you to recognize something here. Remember when we are talking about character, we start with the, it's the qualities of the soul. Yes. And then those qualities know what? Shows in our what? In our actions and in our conduct. So here the Lord is declaring his name. And he says that he is merciful. That's a quality, isn't it? Yes. It's a quality of the soul. He says that he's gracious. That's a quality of the soul. He says that he's long-suffering yes. and he is abundant in goodness and, and truth. truth. What does he continue to say? No, we are understanding. Keeping, that's a verb, isn't it? Yes. Keeping. He's keeping mercy. That's an action word. And so you realize that God states what his character is, and he is going to tell you now what his conduct will be as a result of his character. qualities. Yes. He's saying, the first one was what? Merciful. If somebody, is merci if somebody is merciful, what do you expect them to do? To show mercy. And he's saying that he is keeping mercy for thousands. thousands. The next one says he's gracious. And it says that he is what? Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. sin. And he went on to mention that he's abundant in goodness and truth. Now tell me, can a God who is truthful clear the wicked? Can he pronounce them good if they are wicked? 
No. And so by virtue of the fact that God is truthful, he now has to carry out this aspect, albeit that some look at it as bad. By the fact that God is truthful and he cannot lie, he have to what? By no means clear the guilty. guilty. He has to be visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. So you realize that when you read certain things, the principles that God expects us to understand, he shows us in the word of God. So he starts out by telling you what his qualities are. This is my name. These are my qualities. And as a result of my qualities, I now then have to do what? Display what the result of those qualities are. Do we get it? Good. So the important notes. So with God, glory means less about outward display and more about what? Character. <clears throat> he proclaimed his name to Moses in reference to his glory. His name was his character. The qualities of his heart and the fruits thereof. We need to behold the character of God to be like him. Do we get that? All right, so we can't be beholding. You know, I was last, about two weeks ago, I was with a friend. And another guy came on the scene and he said his daughter, she speaks to him so nice and in this accent. Little girl that has never traveled out of Jamaica, never left the shores of Jamaica. Guess where she get that from? Tablet. Yes. So if all she views, recognize, you know, she never go far in yet, as we would put it. And yet she speaks so eloquently as a foreigner does from the tablet. Right? Now simply put, brethren. There is no way that we can be beholding everything else except the word of God and claim to be God's followers and claim to be Christians and claim that God is bringing about a change in my life and your life. How? If by what you behold, and we are going into an interesting series, this um, youth and issues, you know, we're going to touch on what is called... Um, it's slipping me. Um, but it will touch on the things you view as young people. Young people, the things you watch, social media. That's what it is. We have a hand here. Social media. It will touch on these things. How do you become more and more like Christ without even knowing who Christ is? Or knowing what he stands for? Or even have an idea of who Christ is, but you claim to be a Christian. Yes, my sister. Mike? No, Mike? All right, as the mic is coming. So again, with God, glory means less about outward display. Right? It's more about your character. So people must be able to recognize you're a Christian, not by your dress or your outward display. It's by your character. Yes, they'll see it reflect outwards. Not true? Yes. But it's more of the character. He proclaimed his name to Moses, referring to his glory, not his outward character. And then he went to say his name is his character, and it shows the qualities of the heart and his fruit, which means what is in him is now reflected where? Outward. And, and you know, it's very important that we understand this concept. God first seeks to work where? On our the, inside yes. part. Yes. And then once the inside is right, the outside will also be right. But for many of us, we try to work on the outside because that is what everybody is seeing. But then on the inside, we are like whitewashed sepulchre. We are Ouch. wolves in sheep clothing. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to change that principle because what you do realize, don't get it wrong, God's glory is marvelous and it is beautiful to the extent that by virtue of God passing Moses, remember he had to hide him in the rock? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. By virtue of God passing Moses, that brightness hit him so strongly that by the time Moses went down back to the children of Israel, he had to put on a veil. You remember that? So don't get it wrong. There was the exceeding bright light and the glory that came with it. But what was Jesus focusing on? He was focusing on the characteristics that we need to have. And by virtue of that, you will naturally get the light. But you I understand that? I tell you, do you know? That means, obviously, Moses standing in the presence of God would now remove what from Moses? Sin. So Moses couldn't stand up in front of God with sin in him. Not that Moses was perfect. Don't get me wrong. But through Jesus Christ, Moses was... In. So you notice Moses coming back and worse, they were worshipping what? Golden calf and him come back down there. A source of sin in him came. When Moses come back down. So obviously when they look at him, they're seeing, wow. You know? Moses, you are shining, man. But he's shining with what? The glory of God. And he was a reflection of the character. He because, was the, ah, exactly. the type of Jesus. Go ahead, and then I will have a point here. Morning. And Amen. we can never keep up with the world. <laughs> there is no rest in the world. But Jesus has told us that we must take his yoke upon us, right? And learn of him. And we will indeed find rest, the true rest that he intends for us to get. Amen. Go ahead, my sis. Happy Sabbath. The only thing that I'd Amen. add to that is that it's not a video game. It's reality. Amen. So it's a video reality that you will learn of the past so that it can make you edified to carry on and know what it is that you need to do in the future. But we get the point, don't we? Yes. And I will add, we are saying young people, older, older folks too, 
who get so comfortable in play. I, I'm, I'm, I'm stumped when I see older folks going on, 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 on. What's this new one they call it? I don't even want to mention it. Next thing I see, so, some of you going to try it. I'm on these computer things. Yes, brother Larry, go ahead. That is habit, because you it's now become a practice for you to do that. Yeah. Yes. So also there is the balance though, where you would have taught your children, because remember, mis so in the case where you mismanage like Eli did, example in scripture, like Eli did, you realize? So he didn't manage his sons properly. And that's why when they went wrong, he was also what? Wrong, right? So I agree with Brother Larry. When you don't manage your children and let them know. However, if you as a parent have done your part, not true, you have done your part and that child knows that they are going in a wrong path, God is not going to charge you for that. When the child reach age of consent, and unaccountability. She's adding them as well. <laughs> All right. All right. So the final scripture on the handout is Philippians 4, verse 8. And you remember when we were looking previously, previous slides, it was saying that the Holy Spirit will then do the transformation on our what? On our mind and on our heart. And so Philippians 4 verse 8 is telling us what it is that we need to be thinking on in order for us to, to be beholding the character, to become like Jesus. What do we need to be beholding? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. And brethren, analyze. You see, every time you take up something or you find yourself becoming involved with something, this text should be your guide. Whatsoever things are what? True. So if it's not true, you shouldn't be a part of it. As a Seventh-day Adventist, well, I know, look at all the accolades. A Seventh-day Adventist, present truth, Bible-believing Christian. You see all your accolades? 
So you cannot be in thing, anything that is untrue. We shouldn't be. Whatsoever things are honest. Nothing dishonest. Hmm? Whatsoever things are just. So everybody should see you as a person who will split justice. You will set the thing right. Not true? So if anybody can't fix the problem, then what you can't fix the problem. Then can't come to you and say, yeah, man, listen to this. And when you listen to this, you say, all right, where is the next man? Um, where is the story from the next man? Because you can't take one story. The Bible even tells you that. You have to hear the two sides and balance it, right? And you seek to get the truth. Whatsoever things are pure. So what we are watching day to day, what we become involved in, whatsoever things are lovely, <coughs> excuse me, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think, think, ponder on these things. You know, it's what you're processing your mind that your heart will now be drawn towards and then you're going to speak and act in that regard. You know that? Yes. Think about it, man. Just work it out in the brain and you will see. All right? So, you know, don't want to prolong too much. I remember as we touch on video games, I, I love cars. So I went for the car video games. And I tell you the truth. There was a point in the game that you needed to play the game for a literal 24 hours. And Andre played the game for 24 hours. Tell me to sit down and read the Bible at that time for 24 hours. Me? You're joking. By the time you start reading, and you reach halfway, and you're booking all over the place. Still happen to some of us, not true. But yet, nowadays it's not so much video game in a series. Let me see the eyes. Some person sit down and watch some series. Oh, was Catch me too. <laughs> You're on. And I caught up myself. I said, wait, 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 wait. I sit down and watch this thing so long. I said, no, no. No way. And I step away from it. And I went back to my friend's house that I was watching it the other day. And I said, man, you're still in there watching series. I said, Bridget, you know, turn off that thing and get back to the Bible. I can speak to him that plainly. Very good friend. You understand? Brethren, throw away everything when you're of God. We are, is, see, then we're ready for step in our kingdom, but we're looking weird. So how are you going to step in and looking otherwise? Remember. It's not in there you're going. Remember, Remember Lot's, Lot's wife? wife. Uh -huh. So she went, but she... Have mercy. All right. So we are finished with this, uh, the, the handout from last week, so you can pull out your handout for this week, right? So this week, we will continue looking at the elements of character and the components of a strong character. All right, so let me start first before I take these points. All right, so we are looking at this. This week, we are continuing to look at the elements of character and components of a strong character. All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for being with us so far. If we have sinned against you, please forgive us. Help us to understand your words. Inspire us as we speak. Hide us behind the cross, myself and my wife. May your word stand tall. May each and every person here understand the, the aspects and the truths that we're, we're hoping to put across. And even as we teach, you would inspire us and teach us even more, give us even more understanding of your words so we can truly live them out in our lives. That as you are about to come, Father, as things are wrapping up, we will truly set our lives in order to be ready to step into your eternal kingdom. This is our prayer and our asking. Again, may your Holy Spirit fill this place, your angels quarantine, and help us not to be distracted, but to truly focus on your words now. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All 
All right. So remember the scripture that we are looking at? We are supposed to behold what? The glory of God. Of God. Yes. But is there a correct way for us to behold the glory of God? Have you ever thought about it? How do I behold the glory of God? So I know what the glory of God is. I know what I ought to be looking at. But is there a correct way? Can I be claiming that I'm looking at the glory of God, but yet still not doing it how I ought to do it? Have you thought about that? All right. We're going to look on two verse, two scriptures. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18 and James 1, 2 to 5, 23 to 25. Question 1 says, based on 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18, and James 1, 23 to 25, what is the correct way for us to behold God's glory? But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And James 1, verse 23 and 25, 23 to 25, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man, beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a what? Doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right, so I hope we get the distinction here. We realize that if you are so the person who now starts to behold god he what hearing he's hearing right and he hears it and he starts looking in but did he continue to look in no it says that he was not a doer so you hear something but have you started to put it into practice you are convicted about the truth in one era we hear about dress reform we hear about eating um what we're supposed to eat other healthful habits but have we started putting these things in practice so if it is that we are that person who is now convicted of what truth is but we only let the truth remain as information but we don't start put it and apply it and 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 and, and make it applicable in our lives then we are like that man who was a what a hearer but he was not a doer, doer. And he is like the person who goes in. He sees himself. He sees the true character. And he knows what he is. But then he leaves and he forgets. <laughs> so what you realize, if you are not putting something into practice, you will what? Often Forget. what? Forget. And it, that's just a natural thing. You know, I remember being in school and the first, the first notes that you normally get in the, in the start of the year. If you put it down and you know, you're not the person who revise and revise and revise each week or however you do it periodically. When it comes to the end of the year, what do you do? Do you remember what it is that you have learned? All of it? Every detail of it? No, you forget. Mm. Why? Because you haven't put it into practice. practice. And so the word of God is the same thing. If it is that you come to truth and you don't practice that truth, then after a time we tend to what? Forget, forget it. We forget. And that is why God has to constantly remind us to what? Remember. That is why he says, remember the Sabbath day. Why? Because the children of Egypt, what? They forgot. They right. were not practicing it. And so, therefore, they forgot it. And so, when it is that we are beholding Jesus or the glory of God, we need to not just hear and say, oh, yeah, you know, that is truth. Oh, yeah, that is truth. But if it is truth and we're really convinced that it is truth, then we must now go and do what? Practice the, the truth. And so that is it. We're looking into the perfect law of liberty. What is the perfect law of liberty? The standard, the mm -hmm. perfect character that we want to reach. That is what tells us how we must be perfect. And if it is that we truly want to be perfect, then what should we be holding? 
perfection. Yes. If you want to be perfect, you Look must behold perfection. perfection. Yes. Who is the perfect image that Jesus has left, um, that God has left for us? Jesus. Jesus Christ. So once it is that we start beholding Jesus Christ, he who is the perfect image, we too will be changing to the perfect image, to the full stature of the man, right? As it is in Jesus Christ. By doing. Because what is, in, what is interesting, as I read through the scripture again, I don't know if it popped into anybody's mind. You recognize that in the Christian world, whether even in Seventh-day Adventism right through, the scriptures and spirit of prophecy, they are so clear. You know, they say clear as mud. It is so clear. You can't miss it. Not true? Yet, we will find so much excuse to say, no, not this way, yes, maybe this way, and we swear. But how can you claim to be God's children? And here's why I'm saying this. As I said, in Christian world, a lot of persons don't adhere to what? Perfect law of liberty. Because it was, I asked this question last week, it was what? Nailed to a cross. It was nailed to the cross, you know. So they say. So this perfect law of liberty is no longer required. So they say. But to attain to the character of Christ who established the perfect law of liberty and lived by it, you don't want to accept that. And you claim to say, you are a child of God. Which God? Which God? Can't be Jesus Christ. I don't see it. And so it is. You see, I remember I was at a series. When I walked under the tent, I was doing Bible work. The, 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 the watchman was playing Mark Stewart or something of the sort. And he was there praying and put up a kerchief and something, something on the radio. So the first thing that got through my mind, and the same thing when I'm speaking with my mother-in-law, I say to her, take up the Bible. Go to Exodus. You see, all of who in the world say they're Christian, outline Exodus 20. And tell me if they're following Exodus 20. You see, if they're not following Exodus 21 to whatever, they cannot claim to be a, God, a, a child of God. 1 to 17. They cannot claim it. And you cannot tell me you're healing in the name of God if you are not. You're healing in somebody else's name. You have to, you have to understand that is why we stand by the perfect law of liberty. You know? So to attain the character of Christ, you cannot exclude that. As much as so, we will talk about the law more and not so much to live so we have the character of Christ. You still cannot get rid of the law. No way. And then claim and say you're forgiving and healing and what have you in the name of Christ. It don't work like that, brethren. All right? Um, there was a point here, Brother Green. It is? Brother Green, no, wait for the mic. Uh, we have, you still have your points, sis? All right, so we have two persons with the mic. Afterwards, we take Brother Green. So go ahead, sis, then Brother Brown, then Brother Green. Okay. Lovely, true, yes. important so as I was saying that the devil is in charge of Hollywood Nollywood and Bollywood and the aim of the devil it's the same from the beginning to destroy Christ when Christ was here first he tried to destroy him physically right but now that Christ is gone and he's no longer here he's still trying to destroy Christ and how does he destroy Christ 
by destroying all that Christ stands for. And what does Christ stand for? Truth. God is truth. Everything about God is truth. Now, how are they trying to destroy truth? This is what the devil is trying to do in our brethren. Destroy truth. So when you watch TV or the video games, what are you learning? Subtly, you're learning untruths. So when somebody say to you, can you define who is a woman? <laughs> Notice, everything that is a fact is slowly being eradicated from the face of the earth. If you say, so if you say something that is a fact, you are what? Hateful. Where do you think... <coughs> Sorry. Where do you think we're learning these things from? The things that we're watching, brethren, yes, young people. So you come to church and you learn that Jesus loves and Je Jesus is coming again. But in the, in the TV show that you watch, what is it teaching you? Ah, these people, they're too much. They're going, it's too much. Health, ah, not to eat this. Ah, I must dress this way. Uh, I must keep Sabbath and waste one whole day. <laughs> Brethren. And we don't know. We don't know what sex you are. Are you a female or what are you? Brethren, the devil is trying to eradicate truth. So when you watch these movies. Brethren, turn on patriarchs and prophets on the tablet and listen to it listen to Matthew I'm emphasizing it in a brethren whatsoever things are true think on these things listen to the story of Jesus it's interesting you know read the ministry of healing young people and learn of Jesus that is what is true nothing else around you is true brethren let us press towards the mark of the high calling which is in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. I'm going to skip you, Brother Larry. I'm going to Brother Brown and then to Brother Green up here, please. Brother Green here. Oh, blessed Sabbath, family. Um, you know... As you are there speaking about the glory of God and behold him, I remember this week we read the, um, from eternity past. And we look at the, a man that never died, and that is Enoch. And Britain, the life of Enoch comes so fully forced to my mind. As Enoch was a man who walked with God, that he was upright with God that God after took him. And one of the things that I um, learned from the reading, it Sister White said that the people went out searched for him, both those who were Christian and non-Christian, and none of them could find him. But what, I, but what I'm saying to us, let us bring him, because we know that he not represent people who are going to live in the last day, who are not going to stay there. And as he not walk with the Lord, and he was perfect in the sight of God. Allow us to be perfect. And as I say, do not look at the things that are of this world. And I know better and they allude to social media. There are many things that we can do to so on social media. Because you have sermon that can be listed to impact your life as you go throughout the day. So it is what we do when we do it. So we can live that life that Christ is looking for us. God. We have to remember that Christ is looking. God is looking for Christ in us. And the only way we can do that by us surrender our dream and live in his word. Amen. Brother Green? It's about um, just looking at 2 Corinthians, the one I'm reading from 2 Corinthians 3. Um, it says that, but we all with open face, I was just pondering on that and was just hoping that we could have a little bit um, explanation there because 
um, considering how do we behold um, the glory of God. Uh, the first part said, with hope and faith, right? And I was just hoping that you would just um, explain that to just go to. Explain the open face? With the open okay. face. With as it open relates face. to the glory of God. So you're asking if... All right, so expounding on, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, right? The glory of the Lord. So with open face. You hear the question? Hold on, man. The question is, it's an interaction, you know. So, I like when questions are asked. But we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass, what would open face signify? Question. All right. Um, yes. Open face. Opposite of open is closed. If, if I'm trying to tell you something, say I'm trying to tell you something about the Sabbath, but you think it's nonsense. All I'm trying to talk to you, you're closed. You understand? You're not open to learning anything new. So when you come to Christ um, to read his word or to focus on anything Christ, you should be open. So maybe you're a new Christian and you don't know everything. But you should be open to learning about Jesus. So when it says open face, you're open to learning about Jesus. All I right. hope that helps. All right. Any other point? Open face. Do you have a point, Brother Green, on it? No? Just going along. Any other point? Watch this now. There's a section. If you can't leave out the part that says, as in a glass. When you look in the glass, what do you see? So if you see yourself for where you are and you're looking at who? The glory of God. Watch this now. You know. So you're with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of God. So when you're looking at the glory of God, you're seeing it back. And you know looking in the glass, you're seeing who? Yourself, where you are. And where truth is. Is truth in you? Are you truth? Am I truth? Who is truth? So that's why God's glory is what is going to reflect in us as we look at it and then do it. Because again, you know, you can't look on it. I say, alright God, I hear what you're saying. I see what you're saying. But I have to do this first. You know, I have to go live some life first. I have to go gain some cash first. Alright, you have a point on it? All right. right? All right, since it was brought up, it would be well for you to go and read the entire chapter as to what it is that it's talking about. But if we pick up from 2 Corinthians 3, verse, 4, verse 13, all right, I'll take it from 12. It says, seeing then that we have much hope, that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put on a veil over his face. That the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to at the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded. Their what was blinded? Minds. Their minds was blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away? In Christ. In Christ. I hope we get in the understanding as to what mm -hmm. is happening here. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. heart. What is the veil upon? Heart. Their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken uh, away. away. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. liberty. And in verse 18, but we all, with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord. So understand, when the Old Testament, so it's Old Testament versus New Testament, mm -hmm. it's type versus anti-type. Anti -type. It's the ceremonial versus when the true sacrifice came. So it's all of these things being encapsulated. And the fact that 
Moses, the brightness, the glory, when Moses had to veil his face. Why? Because they were deaf and their hearts were hardened. Close. Spiritual things are spiritually spiritual. discerned. And if you're carnal, can you see spiritual things and understand spiritual things? No. So here he was taking it from these various analogies and looking at it to say that, look, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus has come. Jesus has caused all of these things to be done away with. The spirit of truth is now come who is supposed to teach you and lead you into truth. But can he lead you into truth? No, because your heart is far from me and you are blind. And your heart still have on that veil. And until the spirit reveals it and opens it up to you, can you see clearly? Can you, look at, can you look at the perfect law with an open face? Can you, reveal, can you see the glory of God with an open face? Mm -hmm. Can you understand truth with an open face? No. Why? Because the veil is still, there is still that separating wall of the selfishness and the hardness of your heart. The carnal heart is still there. And God doesn't want, we cannot operate with God from a carnal heart. He said, give me your whole heart. And when it is that you come with your whole heart, then I'll be able now to teach you all truth and to lead you into all truth. He wants to give us a new heart so that the veil can be taken away. He wants to give us, or even the Laodicean church, he tells us that we must bear of him what? I saw so that we can speak so that we can see what is that spiritual discernment if we are if we are not spiritual we won't have the spirit of discernment to discern what God is trying to teach us we understand that point all right so moving on to question two on your handout for us to have good character what must happen to our minds and we're looking at Romans 12 2 you know this one you know this one all uh, right, let us repeat it. After two, one, two. And be conformed to this world. But. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That. And. and so our minds need to be what? Transformed. So it's transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does transform mean? Change. So we can't have the same mind if we're going to have um, the character of Christ or the patience of the saints. Huh? Um, Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in who? You. Oh no, in somebody else. In you. Which, is also, which was also in who? Right. So every time you give a response to somebody... Every time you're about to speak, I, I tell you, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's telling me no more story. <laughs> when you open your mouth to speak, when you're thinking, you should have the mind of Christ. That the response will come out as Christ would put it. Hmm? Not true. All right. So, this is for question three. So, we understand what we must do um, in our minds, right? For question two, you can jot down the answers beside the scriptures. Question three, character is a quality of the soul or the heart. What must the heart be like for us to have a good character? And we look at Ezekiel 3.26 36 to 27. Sorry, Ezekiel 36, 26 and 27. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put what? My spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and he shall keep my judgments and do them. And so, what we realize is that the order of this is also important. He will give us a new what? Heart. A new heart, and he will also give us a new what? New spirit. What is he changing? What is the condition of the heart before? Stony. It's a stony heart. It's a hard heart. It's hardened by sin. 
and everything that is bad. But he's now going to give us a heart of what? A flesh, right? Where we are now softened and subdued. And what is going to cause this process? It is the spirit. spirit. And the spirit is going to cause you to do what? To walk in his statutes statute and to keep his judgments. Uh, judgments. But not only to walk and to keep them, but also to do, do them. them. So he is going to cause you to put that which you have now learned into practice. practice. And when it is that you start putting it into practice and following God's commandment, looking into that perfect law of liberty, then who effects the change? Who effects the change in you? Who causes Holy the change Spirit. to take place? It is the Spirit of God who yes. causes the change. It is not us. We get that principle? Yes. Right. So it is the Spirit of God who is working. And from Maranatha, page 108, paragraph 7, it says, The character of Christ is to be our character. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our hearts. Here is our only safety. Nothing can separate a living Christian from God. Not true? So when it is that our hearts are transformed, is there anything that can separate us from the love of God? No, Romans 8. Nothing at all can separate us from the love of God once it is. And the next question, this is one that I love. What is the result of the Holy Spirit's work on our hearts and minds? What is the result of the Holy Spirit's work on our hearts and on our minds? We'll now look to Galatians 5, 22, 23. And what? some of us know this one as well because it's the fruit of the? Spirit. The fruit. Yes. Note that word. It is the fruit, fruit of, of the, the Spirit. Spirit. is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law against such hey you understand this last part it's not what we're really looking at but you understand when you say against all of this there is no law huh all right, we, we, we're not going into it. Eh? All right, I see Sister Diana's hand. Yes, Sister Diana's hand been and up for a while. Brother McNeish. Hold on, Go on, bit, Sister brother. Diana. Blessed Sabbath family. Um, just to backtrack with um, First Corinthians, as Sister Mayoko has said, in order for, for God to reveal the veil, in Jeremiah um, 33, verse 3, he says, Call unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So in, um, he wants to first get our attention to have that relationship with us so that the veil will be taken from our eyes. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Brother Nish and then Brother Larry. Hello. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, the focus today in today's world is focused on human beings. And the great controversy said, it is a plan of the devil that we look to man instead of the word of God. Because God was set the stage for us as Christians. And in the great controversy, it said, it is not enough to have a good intention. It is not enough to do what man think is right or what the minister tell him. That is right. His soul salvation is at stake, and he should search his scripture for himself. So in order to put ourselves in the spot, my friend, we have to live on the word of God. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So in order for us to reach that stage in life, we have to be a part of the Bible daily, as what Paul said. He is crucified daily with Christ. So we have to focus on the Word of God to attain this Bible in our life. Amen. Amen. Brother Larry. So, as he's, remember now, the result of the Holy Spirit working in our hearts, here are they. Write this one down in the brethren. 
And I know you're here when I touch long suffering, I stretch it out, and temperance. Because a lot of us, you know, gentleness is one of those ones too. Especially those who have children. I tell you. But we all need to have these. These are the fruit of the Spirit. That is what will happen once this Holy Spirit is working. And it is a gradual growth. doesn't have to be slow. Some of us say slow and gradual. It don't have to be slow. It's how much you will um, apply yourself. It will be as quick as you want it to be. Not true? Yeah, man. It can be as quick as you want it to be. Apply. Hold firm to it and apply. All right? Yes, Brother Larry. Um, Brother um, Andre, you have to go back up a little, man. Because you just talk what this, um, the, uh, the fruit that the Spirit is. But you have to go, go up to top, um, from verse 19. From verse 19. Right. Just read what the fruit, of the, fle- the fruit of the flesh is also. So it is a measuring stick. All right. So I'm going to give the, the, the audience that homework. Go back to verse 19. <laughs> we can't go through all of it. But thank you. For right. that point, so you see the difference between the two fruit of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And brother Larry, remember when we started out, we said that we can focus on two, we can focus on the good, and we can focus on the bad. That's what we had said from when we started Revelation 14. But we are only giving you the genuine, the true. And by you knowing the genuine, the true, you will also know what the counterfeit is. Because when you look through these, if you don't have love, what you have. Hate. If you don't have joy, what you have? Misery. If you don't have peace, what you have? You are in unrest. If you're not long-suffering, it means you're very impatient. If you're not gentle, you're harsh. If you're not good, you're bad. If you don't have faith, you're operating based on impulse. Right? And if you're not meek, meek, meekness means somebody who is able to endure suffering while still trying to save the other person. So it's not just you enduring it and just looking at it and mm. You have to see and love that person and want the very best for that person as well. And we know what the opposite of that. Temperance is that you do everything in moderation. If you're not doing things in moderation, it means you're what? Excessive. Yes. So by us knowing what the truth is, we know what the counterfeit is as well. And just right here where it says, again, such there is no law. When you are looking into the perfect law of liberty and you are reflecting what the spirit The outline, the standard, when it is that you're looking and you're realizing that you're on par with it. Is there any need for, is there any need for any consequence or punishment? If you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're going to be punished? No. And so if it is that you're supposed to be reflecting all of these things and you're looking into this perfect law of liberty, the law of liberty will smile back on you and say, well done. So there is no law because the law, even though it has the power now to give you a pronouncement of judgment in the negative sense, it's not, it doesn't affect you. Does it affect you? No, you're on the safe side with the law. You are friends with the law. It's only when you break the law that you now become a what? Enemy of the law. Right, we understand that? All right. So how do we develop a strong, strong character? All right. How? Just a point here. We just looked at good character. I want you to understand the difference. So even when we touch on back to the previous slide, when we touched on the fruit of the spirit, this is what you need to have a good, good. character. But persons still are at different level when it comes down to joy, peace, love. We are still at different levels. And even the Bible tells us that we must have perfect faith, perfect love. You ever hear those scriptures coming out? So you can have a level of love. For us to be attaining to Christian perfection, we have to have all of these But even when you have all of these, your work is not done. Why? We have to now go and perfect all of these things. We understand the work that is set before us. And that is why you'll find scriptures that say have perfect peace, perfect love, perfect joy, perfect faith. Because it's a continual process. And even though we possess some of it, we might still not be at the level of perfection we understand that principle so we're now going to look now at not just you being good but how do you have a strong character all right so strength of character from child guidance all right so the question 
What are the elements of a strong character? This is question five, based on child guidance 161.4 and messages, messages to young people 412.1. Paragraph, strength of character consists of two things. Power of will and power of self-control. All right? Power of what? Will and power of self-control. Message it to young people. Strength of character consists of two things. Power of will, power of self-control. Many youth mistake strong, uncontrolled passions for strength of character. But the truth is that he who is mastered by his passions is a weak man. Hmm? Listening, brethren? The real greatness and nobility of the man is measured by his power to subdue his feelings, not by the power of his feelings to subdue him. The strongest man is he who, while sensitive to abuse, will yet restrain passion and forgive his enemies. You remember before we're talking about meekness? That last sentence there, you can just put meekness. That is a meek man because he's sensitive to abuse. It's not like he doesn't know that what you're doing is you're doing it to hurt him. He sees the hurt, he feels the hurt. And if you think about Jesus, did Jesus understand what, what was happening to him? Oh, yes. He understood what was happening to him, yet he restrained his passion. He said that he opened not his mouth, right? So he sees you hurting him. And yet still, he restrains himself, but not only restrains himself with his heart, bubbling with anger. He sees you hurting him, he restrains himself and says, well, does nothing to hurt you. And he then takes the additional step of forgiving you. Forgiving you and trying to save you, in other words. So you're looking at the person hurting you, you know they're deliberately hurting you. But then you still go a step further to say, you know what? I can have no hate in my heart for you. I must try to save you. You remember Stephen when they were stoning him? And Stephen looked and said, count it not to their charge. Or Jesus when he says, Father, forgive them for they, they know, know not, not what they do. <laughs> that is where we ought to reach and I tell you, this is one that I'm working and I'm praying on. Brethren, pray for me in this regard. Because the children, sometimes you see them do some things and you know that they, they know what they... It's a, it's a battle and, and the battle is a real one. And I pray by the end of this series, I've been praying, Lord, by the end of this series, make me perfect. Make me meek. Because these children are trying. But I now have to look past the hurt. Look past the hurt and, and do what? Restrain myself. Sometimes it's hard. And then move on to try and save them. While you are hurting, you are seeking to save, save them. And that is the place where we need to reach. All right. I see your hand, my brother. All right. Um, so what is the will? What is the will? Um, all right. So... The Ministry of Healing, 176, paragraph 1, page 176, paragraph 1. The tempted one needs to understand the true force of will. This is the governing power in the nature of man. The what? Governing, governing power. You know? So this is what is controlling the nature of man. The power of decision of choice. Everything depends on the right action of the will the right action of the will desires for goodness and purity are right so far as they go but if we stop here they avail what so you know what is right you know what is good you desire it but you cannot stop there where what must you do next huh but you can't they avail nothing many will go down to ruin while hoping and desiring to overcome their evil propensities. They do not yield the will to God. 
They do not choose to serve him. All right, so this is a mouthful for us to swallow. Oh, yes. We'll take it apart just a little bit. So when you hear power of will, you know, many times we use the word and say, oh, you know, yeah, man, I will do this, I will do that. We're not realizing that the word that we're using is so powerful because by us saying I will, we have made a decision to do a particular thing. We understand that? So we say, I will, I will go down there. It means you've made up in your mind that you are going to go oh. down there. It's a decision that you have made. And the power of will, you can replace the word will with choice or decision. It's you making a decision about something. And just as how the brain is what controls the body or the cell, the nucleus in the cell is what controls the cell, what you read or the engine controls the vehicle, it's the same thing. It's the power of the decision. It's the power of will that controls the entire man. It controls how you operate as a person. And so if you truly want to understand how to get it right, that is why it says you need to understand the true force of your will, that power of decision that God has given to you. And that is why when in the last day, liberty of conscience, when men are telling you to do otherwise than that which you have decided to do according to the word of God, it goes against God completely. Because this is something that God has put in place for each and every one of us to prevent us from being robots. That is what makes you an individual. You understanding your power of decision and choices that he has given you and you being able to exercise that freely. No man is supposed to touch that. Do we understand that? Amen. Right. And it is the governing power in the nature of man. When we hear nature of man, what we think about? We're going to that question right next. And it says that desires for goodness and purity are right. So all of us can have desires. It says that, but we must not stop here or else it will avail to what? No Nothing. Thing. You ever hear some person say, oh yeah, you know, I want to, I want to go to church. And they've been saying that they want to go to church from maybe years and years and years and they never reach church. Right, because it is a what? A mere desire. Desire, yes. It's an inclination. It's just something that you want to do. But have you made up in your mind to do it? Said Daniel, purposed in his heart. By you purposing in your heart to do a thing, it means that only God alone can stop you mm -hmm. from doing that thing that you have set out to do. And that is, that is your power to exercise once it's in accordance to the will of God. But that power of decision, that power of choice that we have, it's yours to exercise. But for us to gain the victory over sin, yes. that power of decision that we have to want our own ways and to do our own thing, we have to do what? Give, give it, it to God. We have to give it to God. Yeah, yield it to God. And, and, and that is what we'll be going more in-depth into as we, we continue. All right, so we have two hands, I think, Brother Howard and then my sister. I keep forgetting her name. Brother Howard. Happy uh, Sabbath, everyone. Um, I was looking on the strong man and comparing um, what, what we know about strong in terms of what the Bible and who the Bible speak of as a strong man. Um, Samson um, was looked upon as a strong man, but he was weak. He was one of the weakest men we could look in the Bible on. Um, strong in terms of um, physical, but in, in terms of spiritual, he was weak. And when we look on, um, we, we, we can look on Job as a strong man. Strong in terms of spirituality. And, and they, they, when, when you look on Psalm 1, I, I love that Psalm. It, it's, it's one, number one in, in the Bible for me. And it, it, it says what? Blessed is the, Blessed man, is the man that what? Right. And, and what? So there, there's, there are certain things that we have to do to gain that strength. And then and, and, and we look on um, 2. It says what? But is the, is the light is what? The in the law. 
And then when we, when we go down more, and it says that he, he meditate upon the, the, this word day and night to, to gain strength. And then when we go down more, we, 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 it's, it, um, in, in three, it says what? He shall what? He shall be like a tree planted by the river. And, and, and guess what? <laughs> it brings forth fruit right. in the season. And that is what we need. And, and, and we have to be um, like a child, needing the, 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 um, the nourishment from God. And this is where we get it from, his words. Yes. And you can, put, you can put Jeremiah 17, which is the scripture that we had done before, right beside Psalm 1. Amen. My sister. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, we are sinful in nature. We were born, the scripture tells us that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. But one of my favorite quotations, I think, in the whole wide world is one that is given by the prophetess in the book, Education, where she says, the greatest want of the world is the want of men, men who will not be bought or sold. You know, men who will be true to duty, as a needless to the poor. Brethren, I think that is my favorite quotation in the whole wide world. And you need to use this quotation to, to, to project your character. Because this is what we need. When it says the greatest want, you know what that means, brethren? It is in short supply. But she continues in the paragraph be below where she says, but such a character is not the result of accident. It is not due to special favors or endowments of providence. A noble character is the result of self-discipline of the subjection of the lower to the higher nature, the surrender of self for the service of love to God and to man. Amen. Amen. Brother Larry, amen. Yes, Brother um, um, Andre. Um, yeah, I was. I did about to ask a question, but it seemed like you speak out all that I was about to say, brother um, Andre. But uh, um, brother Andre, I think we know what our problem is. We, 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 when, when, with this study every week, we recognize what is our problem. But what where the line drawn, brother Andre? If is, we are we willing to do the work to get over our problem? As Sister Mayoka just said, the, she see the children giving trouble, and she know they know better. But she want to help them, but at the same time, she want to overcome also. And as we look in ourselves and measure ourselves with Christ and see how shortcoming we are, we look at our characteristic and we look on Christ's characteristic. We look on the high standard that Christ has set and look on our standard of character and see how low it is and say, goodness, when I'm going to get up to this level that Christ has set, uh, and we yearn, we cry, we mourn, but are we willing to do the work? Because that's all it needs is true prayer and 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 fasting and in a james i was looking for it i believe james 4 the bible said we ask and receive not because we ask and meet you understand that is why we don't receive we ask and meet brethren so we must believe with our own whole heart jesus said believe that you receive it before you even ask brethren believe that you receive it so this is what we need to do to overcome brethren all right, we are close to the end, so we'll do question seven, and I believe that's where we'll stop for today, which is, oh, sorry, I believe I didn't do Joshua's yet. Right, for the will. 
Joshua 24, 15. And, it, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And you know, just another quote that you can add to what is the will this is from child guidance chapter 39 it's the very first heading it says every child should understand the power of the will it says the will is the governing power in the nature of man bringing all the other faculties under its sway the will is not the taste so the will is not the what taste. the taste or the inclination but it is the deciding, deciding. power yes. which works in the children of men unto obedience to God or unto disobedience. So that power of choice that God has given to us, that will, is two things it can tend to. Obedience to God or to Disobey. disobedience. So yes. every time we make a decision, no, we are making a decision either to obey God or to disobey, disobey God. All right. So, what makes up the nature of man? And write these down. We have coming from Fundamentals, Fundamentals of Christian Education, education 57.1. The nature of man is threefold, right? So, you have one, two, three on your sheet. The nature of man is what? Threefold. And the training enjoined by Solomon comprehends the right development of the physical, intellectual, and moral powers. All right. And so the example that was given with Samson, Samson was physically strong, but where he lacked spiritual, his moral powers were weak, weak. so he was not balancing all of these three things. And for us to be perfect, we have to have all of these three things perfectly balanced right and when you hear physical what do you think about physiology study of the body good right. when you hear about intellectual what comes to mind the, the mind, mind the brain mind. good <laughs> when you think about moral what does that have to do with spiritual the soul right all right and so from christian education we find these three now connecting the dots to physical intellectual and moral powers all the varied capabilities that men possess of mind and soul and body are given them by God to be so employed as to reach the highest possible degree of excellence. So body goes with what? Physical. Physical. Soul goes with? Moral. Moral. Mind goes with? Intellectual. intellectual let me throw a question out as we close uh quickly in a child what should you develop first hmm? all right let's go back to the first quote you see what is mentioned first it's in the it's order literally in the order you should develop you develop the physical first then the intellectual then the moral powers that is why you're told that your children should not go to school until what age? Seven, or eight. Seven to what? Eight. All right, because what? They'll be running up and down developing the physical. And then while they're developing the physical, you're helping them with the intellectual. Until they get to the age when they're fully there and then you start teaching them moral. Not that you're not teaching before, you know. But you're ensuring that their physical capabilities, they are fully, properly developed. Um, I can't tell you any more stories. We're out of time. Um, we'll have to continue next week. Please keep your hand out. Those who don't have, you can find it online. Print it and follow with us next week. We are glad to have you for today's service. And as we continue throughout the day, remember, it is the Sabbath, and we should what? Keep it holy. We like to end with the text. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as, they shall be as white as, though they be red as, they shall be as what? 
All right, let us pray. All righteous and eternal Father, we come to you once more at the end of this study. We pray that as we've gone through various scriptures and spirit of prophecy readings, we would have truly uh, enlightened. By no means is it a complete study in that we are now encouraged to go back, to read, to study more, to show ourselves approved unto you. Uh, we want to ask for forgiveness if we've sinned against you in our conduct, in our thoughts, in our words throughout. And also we want to present the person coming up next to do the nugget. Bless that one as they share on your natural remedies and what you've given us. Also bless the praise team as they come to sing, as they lift up the trumpet through song. Lord, may your Holy Spirit and your angels sing with them, sing with us. And also we want to present your man's servant, Pastor William Lecky. Lord, we ask that you may place a live coal off the altar, that it will burn sin and dross from him. Place it on his head, that he will be, will, as he stands in the gap, Lord, we will not see him, but we will see you through the words that you will flow through him from glory to us. Thank you now for everything you'll do for us throughout this day. And may we truly worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed Sabbath, everyone. Okay, let us kneel for prayer. Oh, Father, words in heaven, we are indeed thankful to you for bringing us here this morning. Lord, as I'm about to present, I pray now that self will be slain and you will be seen. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Okay, this, this morning's health nugget <coughs> will be on celery. <coughs> All right, I'll be reading from Genesis 1, verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, and it and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be meat. All right, what is celery? Celery is a part of the APSC family, which includes carrots, parsnips, parsley, and, cel and celeriac. Celery is a low-calorie vegetable, which consists mostly of water. It also provides a range of health benefits. All right. I'll be reading from Spirit of Prophecy quote. Nicely prepared vegetables and fruits in their seasons will be beneficial if they are of best quality, not showing the slightest sign of decay, but are sound and unaffected by any disease or decay. More die by eating decayed fruits and vegetables, which ferment in the stomach and result in blood poisoning than we have any idea. This is from Councils and Diet, page 309, paragraph 1. Um, now, when we are purchasing celery, we should ensure that it is fresh. So if we see any like brown spot on it, then we know that it's not fresh. All right, and also when the stalk is firm, 
that's one way of detecting freshness. All right, so if it's limb, you know that it's stale. And um, when we do purchase the celery, like the leaves, it should, be, it should be used within one to three days. However, the stalk, it can be used up to seven days. So when we are purchasing our celery, we should bear that in mind. All right, there are a lot of benefits from celery. Celery is rich in antioxidants that help fight against cancer. It contains two bioactive flavonoids, apigenin and lutein, that may kill cancer cells in the body. Celery is rich in fiber content that makes it a detoxification agent for the gut. All parts of celery can flush out the toxins regularly from the gut. Celery contains vitamin A that is essential for stronger immunity, better eyes, and healthier skin. Celery contains a substance called phytholites, 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 that work to relax the artery walls and increase blood flow, thus lowering blood pressure. It also contains fiber, magnesium, and potassium that helps to regulate blood pressure. Celery is steeped into nutrition and contains numerous minerals. It is rich in calcium, sodium, copper, magnesium, iron, zinc, and potassium. It also contains vitamin K, vitamin A, vitamin C, folate, and a minimal amount of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So we see that celery is a very good vegetable <clears throat> for us to have. And um, like my sister who shared a testimony with me, <clears throat> she's here with us today, she had, um, <clears throat> she had some stomach problems. And, you know, the Lord showed her in a vision that she should use celery. And when she used the celery, she had gained tremendous success. There, you know, the problem has decreased. So to God be the glory for his herbs that he had given us. All right. So I'm now going to share a recipe with you. You'll see it on the screen. It says, step one, celery juice. Step one, grab two bunches of celery and cut off base on top of the stalks. Wash the stalk gently in a colander. Step three, chop the celery stalk in thirds and place them in base of your high speed blender. And you know, when I look at the recipe, I'm, I'm thinking country living. What if there are no blender? What can we do? All right, so we have to be creative. I don't know, I was thinking maybe beat it out in something like the mortar or, you know, something we can do. So, as we prepare, we have to think country living also. So, step four, it says add half cup of water and put on the lid. Blend until smooth, until the tamper to push the celery in into the blades if necessary. Five, place a clean nut milk bag over the mouth of a, pitch, of a pitcher and pour the blended celery through the nut bag. Use your hand to squeeze the celery juice through the bag. Now you can, for me, I just blend and drink it as is. I don't strain it. <clears throat> Step six, serve the juice immediately and keep any let leftovers in a tightly sealed jar, sealed jar in the refrigerator. <clears throat> All right. We have come to the end. I hope you have learned something. God bless you. Blessed Sabbath saints. I'll share a few announcements with you. Baby Blessing will be next Sabbath, July 16th. So if you or any family member has a, a baby to be blessed, please see me or speak with pastor before next Sabbath. This is very important. 
our next Come Let Us Reason Together on YouTube and Zoom platforms will be next Sunday, June 17th at 7 p.m. We'll be discussing the loud cry. Please join us. Our all-night prayer and fasting, brethren, this month will be July 27th, starting at 9 p.m. We'll start at 9 p.m. and we will go until 12 noon, Thursday, July 28th. We will be doing this in Knock Patrick, Manchester. We went to that church a couple of weeks ago. That is where our all-night prayer and fasting will be. Please begin to make preparations to join us. Please note that in light of the prayer and fasting on the 27th of July, there will be no vestry day for pastor. He will not be in office. Neither will the midday power be broadcasted on that day. We are giving early, early notice, brethren, anyone who desires baptism. We ask that you be in touch with a Bible worker. Our next baptism will be in September. But you would have had to be studying with a Bible worker as of now until then to be able to participate. And this also goes for rebaptism. All right? So start preparing for baptism which will be in September, you will have to be working with a Bible worker as of this month. God bless you. Have a spirit-filled day.